Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and today we are talking poetry. If you're here, you're probably ready to talk about one of the best contemporary poets in my personal opinion. Who else could I be talking about other than Kate Tempest? Or you just want to talk poetry and let's be real, I'm cool with that. Or you're a loyal subscriber checking out my new content. If you're not, then um, you know, there's a way to change that. Anywho, I first came across Kate Tempest when I listened to her poem Hold Your Own. It's a video on YouTube which I'll link down below. Really, really recommend you watch it. Changed my life. And ever since listening to uh, that, it's been one of my favourite poems and I really have just admired Kate Tempest, even though I've only listened to one of her poems. So then I set out to get more of her poetry. Um, I looked up if she had written anything, and she had, and it was called Hold Your Own. So I was like, that's so good, it's gonna be, you know, one of my favourite poems written down so I can keep reading it, uh, and it's gonna be new poetry from Kate Tempest. So then I ordered the book. Here it is, and it's what I'm gonna be talking about today, but even though it's called Hold Your Own, it, um, doesn't have that poem in it. I was devastated, devastated. <laughs> but there's always the video I can watch and I have new poetry in here, so let's get into it. If you haven't heard of Kate Tempest, uh, she's a English poet, a rapper, so it's that sort of vibe. But I think in terms of rhythm and choice of words, she can't be beat. It's just so perfect, it's like a song, it's like a rap, it's poetry, it's powerful, and I love it. This poetry collection in particular revolves around, like, gender and coming of age and those sort of themes. It's based around the mythical prophet, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, Tiresias, who goes through life and keeps um, transforming through different gender identities and interacting with the gods and just a really cool person that I didn't know about, so I'm really glad that I got to read poetry about that. I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars, or a 75%. It was published in 2014, and the only critique I would have about it is that some of the poems weren't, you know, like, as interesting to me, um, so I kind of lost it a little bit. Other than that, I would really recommend checking this one out. It's really short, just fly through it and experience some poetry. That's all I can say without spoiling you, I'm gonna be getting into the poems in detail now, um, so if you haven't read Hold Your Own, go read it, come back, and we can discuss, okay? Okay. Goodbye, people that haven't read Hold Your Own, go read it and come back. Goodbye! Okay, let's do this. I just really love the um, starting quotation from Tiresias. I will go once I have said what I have come to say. Uh, from the get-go, it hooked me. It was also nice to learn more about Kate. She's a playwright and a recording artist, which makes sense, because I think the poem I listened to, Hold Your Own, was part of like an EP or something. She's won the Ted Hughes Award for Poetry. She's currently working on a novel. I also got this second hand pretty, in pretty good condition. Um, I only had to white out something on the top page, which you can't even really see, so I think that went well. Okay, I'm gonna read to you the first stanza from the first poem in here, Tiresias. Picture the scene, a boy of 15, with the usual dreams and the usual routine. That's what I'm saying! This is what I'm saying! The rhythm is just so good! Oh my gosh! Oh, can you imagine watching, like, that spoken word performance? Like, snakes, two snakes, coiling, uncoiling, boiling and cooling, oil in a cauldron, foil in a river, soil on a mood ring. I really loved the line. His curses are perfect, the trees bow their branches in worship. And there's like the strong theme of transformation, so Tiresias is born a boy and then goes through his transformation into a woman. And there's the line, she is glass amongst sand. And it's like all about that like physical transformation as well as like how the world perceives that difference. She learned how to smile without meaning an inch of it. And I, that got me, I was like, um, 
talk about modern society. And like how Tiresias like empowers themselves and like just travels throughout life and has all these experiences. Drink down every wave that came to break her spirits down, queen among misfits. Each corner she inhabited made warmer by her magic. And then it talks about love, so Tiresias meets like their soulmate and it's just about like the stuff that comes with that, like the uncertainty, the passion. And uh, also I think this is based on like Tiresias in modern times as well. So it's like this ancient Greek mythical being thrust into the modern problems of life till she met her match, exhaustion. Find a man thinner than string. Oh, I thought that was so clever. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and the whole thing about Tiresias is that they're blind. So um, Zeus and Hera were crawling and they called Tiresias up and was like, who has a better time during sex, men or women? And uh, Tiresias is like, women. And I think like Zeus gets mad about that or something and blinds Tiresias, but and also gives them the gift of prophecy. So that like the whole thing about Tiresias is they're a blind prophet. And there was a poem in here called Blind Prophet, as in like making money. And I was like, it's perfect, it's perfect. I think my favorite line in the whole uh, anthology is don't matter that we'll lose today, it's not tomorrow yet. And I think that's just so pertinent in like contemporary society because like, I feel like sometimes things just get so busy that you're like, you get to the end of the day and you're like, oh, like today's gone, like I wasted it. But like, it doesn't really matter. Like you still have tomorrow, you still have like, you know, another chance. And I think that's really cool. And it fits with the theme of like redemption and transformation that's like th flowing throughout this poetry. True love takes its toll on souls who are not used to feeling whole. I thought that was so cool. And I think it's something we often don't talk about as well. Like, if you get into a relationship, you get married, like, you find your partner, everyone's like, oh my god, that's so amazing, like, oh, you're so in love, like, it's so cool. And it's like, it doesn't take into account the actual realities, like, how sometimes you disagree, sometimes you argue, sometimes there's bad stuff. And sometimes it's just, like, a huge change that people aren't used to. Like, you're not used to feeling whole, and sometimes that you know, it does take its toll. She's right. Smash the cup and let it happen. I liked that line. I like the moon analogy that's present in here because I, like, I think I've talked about this before on my channel, but, like, I really associate the moon with, like, change and gender and femininity and all of that, and it really means a lot to me, so I thought that was cool. There's also another clever line that said, ripping his cane so he's able. And, it, and it's like cane as in a walking cane and able as in you're able to do something. But like, cane and able, like, did you make a religious analogy? The writing is also so English and I just freaking love it. It reminds me of um, <laughs> the English rap group, The Rizzle Kicks. If you haven't checked them out, I'd recommend. But she's like the weather's mentor and I'm like, oh, it's so good. Two black backs untangle dragons. That was great. That was great imagery. Coming back to the Zeus thing, I like how when Zeus speaks, it's like rain, like that's how he speaks. I really love page 17, so I'm just gonna read it out. He started doing pottery. He's joined the local choir. If he thinks about his history, his heart is set on fire. So like, it's also like thinking about the past is painful. There's no way back. There is no track that leads to his past lives. He sets himself on forwards and he loves and he survives. His lover is a gentle man, together they are free. They enjoy each other. I love him and he loves me. Oh, it's queer and I love it. But on dark days, he likes to walk beside the heartsick sea. And as the waves begin to howl, he drops down to his knees and cries for all he's lost and for all he used to be. Oh, oh my God, Teresa, yes. I also think Tiresias is immortal because like it seems like he's like their lifespan stretches across a long period of time. I like the line that's like each that you have been. It's like all your different selves coming together and making you. There was also um, this really nice poem that Kate wrote to her niece and I recently became an auntie so that really connected with me um, and I really liked the line that said 
no flower bends its head to offer teaching to a seed. And Kate was kind of saying to her niece, like, you need to make your own way, like, don't listen to anyone, like, you know, form your own opinions, figure life out for yourself, and it, you'll be okay. I really liked the line that said, all life is empathy. Empathy is something that's really important to me. Um, I think compassion is, like, the best thing a person can have. So that just, like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> There's a po poem about um, the education system called School, and, you know, I couldn't really agree more, to be honest. It's how I feel about the education system. I've talked about this before on my channel. Clearly, I think school is trash, and we should change it so that, you know, it's better for students all around. But I'll read you the line that connected with me. We'll learn the way it feels to see injustice and shut our mouths in case it comes for us. How to follow orders when you're bordering on nausea and you're bored and insecure and dwarfed by fear. That doesn't sum up school. I don't know what does. I really like um, the poem about like the modern Tiresias going to parties and stuff. He's summoning their destinies, sentencing their spirits. Poor things, the joke's on them. They think he's rapping lyrics. Ugh! Oh, musicians and rappers and poets, all so powerful. I love this message. I really like the line that said, the certainty of knowing I have nothing. And like that like really hit me because I think everyone gets to some point in their lives where they're just so sad, so broken down. Maybe they've lost people, maybe they've lost possessions, their home, and you just feel like you have nothing. But then like, as things start to come back into your life, it feels weird because you're so used to just knowing that you have nothing. Oh, uh, I love the poem, The Cipher. It should be spoken word. I just couldn't picture her saying it. And I think this poem is about spoken word, like what it feels like to say stuff. We wear our hoods up. We talk in couplets, throwing out lyrics through smoke. No, I can do this much better than them. I can feel it. Something like stillness, but nothing like stillness. My words are my own. I'm moving as if I have never been gentle, and I'm feeling bigger than all of these buildings. I've performed poetry before, I've done slams, and I know exactly what she's saying. Like, when you're doing that, and you're saying your words, and they just flow, and you feel so strong, and uh, it's indescribable. I love the line about Tiresias that says, she is fire and sleet and granite, space rock shattering the planet. The last lines of this collection, he keeps his eyes in a plastic bag. He keeps his eyes in a plastic bag. And I think like it's repeated because it's important. Like Tiresias keeps his eyes. So this like thing of his past that he's carried with him in a plastic bag, like in, moder in, like, in this modern time, that's what he carries it in and it's just like it's like it's important but it's not important it's all these different contradictions at the same time there's a poem called the old dogs who fought so well and it's kind of about like the classic writers who have had an impact on kate and like she's saying it's not fair that they're so good i was in love with them for being so human and for saying it all so well if you think they didn't go crazy in tiny rooms just like you're doing now then you're not ready that's when they find you and tell you they all went through the same thing you feel like someone just lay you down on your back and showed you the sky oh my god i get that so much the reason i fell in love with poetry was because i felt like someone else had shown me the world in a way that I understood it. It's like someone's opening up your world and speaking your language so you don't feel alone. And like, I think that is the whole point of poetry. And that's what I really liked about this collection is that it made me like kind of remember about poetry, like why I love it and like what it does, um, how powerful it is. We keep still and let the planet move. I thought that was cool. I really like the poem about how she'd rather not be writing, like how it's obvious that she's really passionate about poetry, but sometimes you just don't want to write and you feel like you have to, or you don't feel creative. And it's like, I want to go live life right now. I don't want to be stuck here writing. Your lips lead mine like needles leading thread. I thought that was cool. This line, it only is until it's not. <sighs> This made me think so much because in a way it makes sense like 
things kind of only exist because we think about them, right? Like, it's like, um, out of sight, out of mind. If you don't think about something, then it's, it's just not in your world. Like, I'm sure there are things, well, that obviously there are things in the world that I don't know about, like, so they don't exist for me, if that makes sense. Things only, like, are okay until they're not, like, that certain things are in your life until they're not. I just think it's such, like, a in-your-face way of saying it. This line that I'm about to say equally, like, captivated me, but also made me think and frightened me. <laughs> no matter how far you have come, you can never be further than right where you are. I don't know how to feel about that. To me, it gives the impression like it doesn't matter about the progress you've made. Or it's just saying maybe progress doesn't exist and that like things are what they are. It only is until it's not. Like progressing from the past, you're not moving forward. You're just where you are and that's what things are like right now. I guess. I'm gonna read um, some lines from these things I know. Language lives when you speak it. Let it be heard. The clever folk talk in endless circles and congratulate themselves on being so untouched by passion. But since when did the clever folk ever know anything? I really like that line because it reminded me of like how some people talk about literature. Like if you haven't read the classics and you're not a reader or if you read YA or graphic novels or middle grade then you're not really a reader you're not academic you're not intellectual you talk about all these books that have been analyzed to death and you don't really care about them you're so untouched by passion but like you don't know anything because you're you're not like trying to expand your world it's as much about instinct as it is about intellect and if you feel it it's alive let it be magic these are not engines we're making it's saying like you need to put your heart into it and not be so mechanical do not love the idea of life more than you love life itself the world is a terrible place for sensitive people but the closer we come to losing our minds the harder we'll work to keep them i really like the line about being sensitive when it says if you've been beaten up good for you. If you've never been beaten up, good for you. If you get beaten up all the time, you should take up boxing. I think that is so amazing. I'm a HSP, a highly sensitive person, and I feel like, you know, people don't really think about stuff as much as I do, or like some people don't really get like the way I think or how I go about life. So I do feel like I'm kind of like taking a beating sometimes. I should take up boxing, mental boxing, you know, just fight back against those thoughts. It's okay to feel alone. Usually you are. That's what poetry's for. Don't read women's magazines. They're bad for your stomach. <laughs> There's a poem about someone's dad who goes off to war, and it's just about how awful that is. They heard the dreaded blast. The man that marched in front of Joe was completely blown apart. The shrapnel hits their eyes, so it's kind of like Tiresias, like, going blind. You'll pledge your blood and bone, not in the name of good or evil, but in the name of home. I don't support the war, my son. I don't believe it's right, but I do support the soldiers who go off to war to fight. Please don't go fighting wars, but fight the men that start them, or fight a cause that's yours. I also like the poem about fame. Um, it's called Progress, and it's like just about how fast everything is and how like nothing really kind of means anything anymore in the media. Look, the mother of a dead son, weeping irate. Look, a celebrity eating shit and singing Agadu. We used to burn women who had epileptic fits. We'd tie them to a stake and pro proclaim them a witch. Now we'll put them on a screen if they've got nice tits, but they'll be torn apart if they let themselves slip. Before you were damned for the things you did, or if you didn't know how the villagers lived. Now you're handed the mould and told, fit into this, and maybe one day you could really be big. And I think, like, it's so true. <laughs> it's kind of like, everyone kind of has to be the same, and, like, do this and this and this to get success, and it's just boring. <laughs> Those were all my thoughts on Kate Tempest's Hold Your Own. I just really adored this book. It really ignited all these thoughts for me um and I really hope it did for you too please discuss with me what was your favorite poem uh what, what was the part that stood out to you the most what was your favorite line what's your favorite poet in general what's your favorite poem in general I'd really love to read your favorites have you read anything else by Kate Tempest could you recommend it to me please let me know all your thoughts in the comments below
I'm Jade the Beamer. I make videos every Monday about pop culture, mainly books, TV shows and movies, but also board games, video games, writing and poetry, of course. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Here are all of my socials. I'm on Instagram, Twitter and Goodreads. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me um, and for joining Tiresias on their journey. Take care and I'll catch you next time, you little waves. Goodbye!